And today we are going to be reuniting. nicey. We're going to be looking back at some of our old episodes of Couch Chat. So get ready for some excitement. <laughs> okay, so this is our mind trail. We're going to be answering some questions that Mommy J prepared for us and we don't even know what they are. But she just asked us some very funny questions that I think have something to do with them yet. Let's go to the first slide. What, what changes, changes have you noticed from our 2021 episode? What changes have you noticed from our 2021 episode? Uh, that must mean for the beginning of the year. Uh, well, at the beginning of the year, we did like dancing. Yeah, we, we had very simple PowerPoint. And some of them we didn't even have PowerPoints, all just a few pictures. But now we have loads of different PowerPoints. We have oh, loads wow. of camera changes you can see so yeah um what else <laughs> oh you have a banner guys if and you haven't banners. noticed it where have you been we have a banner we have hoodies we are looking real good now and um, what else do we have yet we have a website so if you haven't gone yet go to readgroofy.com we'll be happy to have you and um, what else jed uh Oh yes, yes, we had the 30 second countdown. Yeah. Um, we only added that a few weeks ago though. Yeah. Well, maybe it's not strictly couch chat, but for story time, we have not just we've been reading more fiction books. So at the beginning of the year, you may have seen us reading a black scientist book. They were non-fiction, they were all real people. <laughs> <laughs> they were non-fiction, they were all real people. But now we read mostly fiction, like Jungle Doctors of the Places, or Tales from, Africa. Tales from the Caribbean, loads of different folk tales and stories about Africa and civilization. What else? Well, we have a more professional setup, but you can't see that properly. But we do, we probably. What else? We've um, also invited a lot more different guests. Before, we used to invite mostly kids, but now we're and then, inviting and lots of yeah, adults. invited some friends yeah we invited some other adults what else did we say uh, hmm. sometimes we'll use our camera but that's part of the setup right yeah okay wait oh, no, what's next can you remember our first couch chat topic can you remember our first couch chat topic uh oh um, uh, i think uh, it was about reading a book oh i can't even remember Twist your tails with time twist. I can't remember the look I read. Wait, I think it's going to be a couch chat topic. I can't remember the first couch chat topic. Can you? Yeah. I don't know. Do you know? Let's go to the next slide. David will tell us. A video. Let's see what this is. Jed is going to give us a little bit of um, music interlude. Right, Jed? Yeah, come on. <laughs> it on a D string. Okay, all right. Thank you, that's brilliant. Okay, like uh, we were saying before, 
Today we are going to have like a summary session discussion about uh, what we've learned this week from Horike Betsy and Sam Geek so that we will not just be reading and reading without actually digesting some information and I think we'll continue to do it like this so Saturday will be like a revision time where we go through everything we've read I think that's a good idea so today um, at about um, 7.30 a.m. I heard one of my children scream, Leave me alone! Leave me alone! And I jumped out of sleep with my head aching me and pounding. And I went close to their door. And the two of them were having a fit. So I tried to stop them. And I didn't, I didn't go into their room. I just told them, take control of each other and deal with yourself and I went back to bed. So later on, a little later on, they came back to come and have some prayer time in the morning with me and um, the argument started again and they went on and on and on and this time I felt, no, it's time for me to step in. And what did I do? Girls, what did I do? You Tell them. Just talk. Pardon? You made yourself talk. You, I made you have a talk. You need to speak loud so everybody can hear you. I made you have a talk. Jen, how did I make you have a talk? Like, you have to pronounce one of the words. Okay, now, what I did was I sent them into their room and I said, get out of my room. Okay, on you go. Get out of my room. I need you to go into your room and then tell each other how you're feeling about what is happening. And then both of you discuss about it. And immediately they got into their room. You did it! You did it! You did it! You did it! Mm. So I said, no, that's not how to do it. I said, okay, Jamie, tell Jedida how you feel. And I think she did. And Jedida was not happy at all. She wasn't having it. And Jedida told Jamie how she feel. And Jamie was not having it. And both of them went on and on. So I said, so I started, <laughs> so I started stopping it. And I said, look. You don't speak to her like that. Let her express herself, Jamie. You need to let her express her opinion because she's as human as you are and she needs to express her opinion as you are. So when they came back to my room after the resolution, the so-called resolution, that was when I had a discussion with them. Jamie, another, another discussion. So Jamie, tell them what did they talk about complete resolution okay. today? Complete resolution and negotiation. Complete resolution and negotiation. Those were the two big words I used for them to. Complete resolution was like adults. Okay? Yeah. And the other one, negotiation was business. So that's what it was about. It was about conflict resolution. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I didn't even do anything. What, what has, has been, been your favorite and least favorite, favorite episode? episode? What is your favorite and least favorite episode? So which one is your favorite and which one is your least favorite? My favorite is virtue. Why? Because um, <clears throat> it's all about good things and how to be good mm. and how you're supposed to be good, how you follow the rules. But, being good. but we haven't actually finished virtue yet. So make sure you tune in on to Couch Chat so you don't miss an episode. Okay, what was your least favorite one? That was about I don't really have one. Yeah, I mean neither. I don't really. Ugh. I actually like filming all of them. They're all really fun. Yeah. But my favorite has to be either an African Christmas or all about food. Those are really good. Wait Here. a second. More videos. Let's watch this one first. Let's talk. What is virtue? Virtue. Virtue is um something good. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> virtue is something good. <laughs> virtue is something that you value. Something, something that you value. That's virtue. Oh um, yeah. So if you, if you value a painting, you virtue that painting. Oh, that's. I'm hearing that's interesting. Um, uh, for me, I think virtue is a standard of behaving. Oh yeah, like patience is a virtue. Yeah, exactly. So virtue is a standard of behaving. 
is the way we act, the moral standard of behaving. So we have some slides for you today. We've gathered so many things on the internet. We don't have any copyright to anything we are putting on, but we are just using it to discuss with the kids all about virtue. And I'm just going to bring on the um, slide quickly. And we said the topic of our discussion today is virtue. And um, I'll just quickly go and uh, the girls, what is virtue? We talked about that. Virtue what? is a pattern of thought and behavior based on high moral standards. Ah, so that's a big English, high moral standard. So moral, uh -huh. moral, that means human, doesn't it? That's mortal. Okay. What's moral? Okay, moral is behavior. Is, moral is a behavior, behavior I standard. Thought, I, I thought moral meant the ending of the story, like the meaning of the story. Aha, uh -huh. that's, that's another mean. thing. That's another thing. So moral in that sense is talking about something we learn from it. So moral in terms of uh, a standard of um, goodness or a standard of doing something right. You know, moral is a lesson, so it's like doing something right out of every situation, moral standard. Um, uh, so what are we talking about here? So, and what's another definition there? Joanna, can you read that, this one? Wait, that one. Yeah, uh, read it, yeah. A good moral quality in a person's or the gen gender general. General quality of being moral good. Morally good. So a good moral quality in a person and the general quality of being good is virtue. So when somebody says you have good virtue, that means you have good morals and you are kind of top notch. And uh, so is any of us top notch? Mm. You. No! <laughs> no, no, I'm not top notch. I'm not top notch because I don't think anybody is actually perfect. perfect. Oh, so we yeah. still have a bit of good morals, and mm. we are all working on our moral standards. So I don't <laughs> see myself as morally good, but I like to be. But I'm not sure I am. Another one. Let's watch this one too. Guess what? Many African societies have rich culture of masquerades. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. The New Yam Festival? That's or... part of African tradition. Oh. But we are talking about masquerades today. Aren't there masquerades in there? Like there's a yes, when, when they are, in the kitchen. Yeah, when they that are displaying, there will be masquerades, yeah. But that's that's like the tradition that brings out the masquerade. That's like something they have to do that brings out the display of the masquerades. Okay, so uh, many African societies have rich culture of masquerades, they play, which play um, ceremonies and dance by Max performance. Read the second line. They provide entertainment, define social roles, and communicate religious meaning. Okay, so that means that the masquerades, they provide entertainment, they define who is the head, who is the child, who is the monkey, who is the dog. <laughs> so masks are used in performance and is a treasured part of art. You know, when I see films nowadays and I see people putting on masks, you know, and they say blind party, it came from Africa. Yeah. Wait, um, also, um, mascots. Mascots. <laughs> Just the name mascots, right? Okay, so, brilliant. Uh, so, masks mask are used. And, um, Little J, read the last one. Um, they are also. They are also important symbols of ancestor spirits or even the history of culture and culture of whole peoples. So masquerade serves as symbols of the African culture, serves as history of everything Africa is about. Okay, so when you mention Africa, you can't take away the traditions. That doesn't mean that we all believe in what it is today, but it's part of our traditions, part of our history. So now you have an idea of where we are coming from. And now we finished our video. That was really interesting.
I really liked that episode about virtue. And we had a guest from somewhere else around the world. It wasn't really that far, just another city. But it was still somewhere else. Okay, what was the next question? Next question is, what episode do you remember filming the most? Exhausting! Ugh. What episode do you remember filming the most? Ah, uh, I really... I remember filming the friendship episode. That's one that stays in my head quite a lot. Yeah. What else do you remember, Jed? I don't really remember one, but um, I I only do remember the most recent ones. I remember heroes. Oh yeah, I remember that too. It was about our role models and who we think made a good change in this world. Do you have a video? I knew so, it. Let's go. So, how can you be sure a friend is a true friend? Good question. Jed, how can you be sure someone is a true friend? Ooh, um, yeah. That if they come to your house, if they don't complain that it's dirty, it's small, or any. Okay, let me interpret that in another word. You can know a friend is a true friend if the friend finds out things about you and is yeah, ready to stick with to you say, <laughs> say a friend finds out history and finds out your history you. finds out things about you finds out your weaknesses and don't exploit it because somebody that exploits your weakness is necessarily not a friend does it exploit and share with everyone exploit me to use it against you or use it to the advantage yeah so you know there are people like that and they come to your friend front and they say oh my friend my friend my oh, friend my friend <laughs> that kind of thing make sure you turn the subscribe button for red to gray bye yeah. <laughs> don't say bye because you can have this at the beginning about heroes 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 now and the girls and i are thinking of telling you who our favorite heroes are for me yeah that's what we are talking about my hero is my mom <laughs> that's her picture right there so for the three of us we had our heroes lined up for everybody to see my mom is my hero and um, she was a very sacrificial woman i mean she gave everything to make sure I am alive. Um, you, you understand that kind of person that um, gave all a all to make sure that you have what you have. That's the kind of person my mom was. She's my hero. She started from nothing and she taught herself how to read and write. In fact, basically, by the time she left this world, she could read everything fluently by herself that's why she's a hero that means she's she's self-driven and that gave me the ability to to also be self-driven in my life because she's really self-driven and she's godly so big j who is your hero in the screen there and electricity to parts of her country that had been without things like electricity for 15 years wow that's a long time that's a good precedent to have as president she enforced a free public school system, increased wages and pensions, and greatly reduced what the country owed to other places. Okay. She was awarded the 2011 Nobel Peace Prize with Lema Gaboi, <laughs> Gaboi and Talkal Karman for a dedication to women's rights okay that's brilliant so i want to be a president mm -hmm. like president l johnson certainly. so Buma, you can aspire to be the next nigerian president because you already have someone that is a hero that was a president in africa or even the prime minister of united kingdom what about Ooh. that Oh, look at Mr. that! Jay. Exactly. So, Big J, can you tell us about Kofi? Little J. Oh, Little J. <laughs> can you tell us about Kofi? So, Kofi was a minister and also an activist who worked to empower Black people all around the world. Wow. Okay. 
Tell us, what did she do? Where did she come from? She was immigrated from Ghana. So she was from Ghana uh -huh. to the US. Wow, so she immigrated from Ghana to the US. What year? In, in the early 1920s. Wow, so what did she do in the US then? She joined the Black Nationalist Movement. Mm -hmm. Where she she became spokesperson. Wow. You like to be spokesperson. I know you like talking. So you will be spokesperson, right? <laughs> okay. Yeah. What else did she do? And she was also the director of the Universal Negro Improvement Association. Look at that. She also became a director. Wow. She helped the civil rights movement as a fundraiser and organizer. And she worked with Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and Malcolm X. Wow. Okay, so that she's, is a short summary of uh, Maya's life. She's an inspiration to all of us. So let's see who is the next superheroes. Yeah, we have two here. And you know why I like um, the gentleman on the left? Because he has brains. What is his name? Can somebody tell me? He's called Chike Obi. Chike Obi. <laughs> Chike Obi. He's called Chike Obi. He's a mathematician and a very good one at that. And what's the name of the other one? The other one is called Nelson Mandela. <laughs> we all know. Okay, so. Can you tell us about, a little bit about the mathematician? He was a mathematician, uh -huh. a professor, and a Nigerian politician. Come on, tell me! He had everything! You know, he's just like Richard Hill. Yeah. Richard Hill was a scientist, a politician, and an artist. Wow. So you can have a combination of everything. So, oh, Jeremy... And he also died way long ago. He died in 28. Okay, she doesn't know. So the name of a movie that has been um acted or played or filmed in <laughs> honor of the two, three, there are actually three of them, not two of them. It's called Hidden Fingers. So I wanted to go out as a kid and watch those movies and be inspired because their lives are inspirational. And the next set of people are who knows those people? Who are they? Harriet. The first one is Harriet Tubman. Uh -huh. And the second one is Miriam Makeba. Miriam Makeba and Harriet Tubman. So tell us about Harriet. Harriet was well, escaped slave and she was an abolitionist. Abolitionist. She was an abol abolitionist. Uh -huh. And and she was an armed spy, so she was also a spy. Wow! Mm. Dude, that's double, double seven. Double seven. I don't know that. That's double seven spy movie. Oh, James you know, Bond. James Bond. So she was a James Bond in that time. <laughs> no. So, <laughs> so another thing she did was she helped slaves to escape which was they very brilliant slavery. and she and actually did it through a safe house in an underground railway can wow. somebody tell me what her nickname was her nickname was M moses wow. <laughs> her nickname was moses she's a brilliant brilliant inspiration to me that in the time where everybody was afraid she stood out and she helped over 300 slaves to escape um, from wherever they are to the northern part of America so that they can gain freedom. Her life is an inspiration. In fact, up till now, she's buried as a in the military honors Fort Hill Cemetery in New York. Mm -hmm. That means she stood out and she's she, she achieved something irrespective of whatever was going on around her she didn't allow the slavery and the things going around her to stop her from making a difference in her life i love that name moses she drew people from slavery to freedom kids what are you going to use your life to change and what are you going to draw people away from are you going to be pulled to evil or you're going to 
help people to be drawn away from evil and drawn away from harm. Drawn so away from evil and hard. Yeah. So that is a big inspiration for us to think about. So what about, yeah? Miriam Makeba okay. was a South African singer, uh -huh. Goodwill ambassador, uh -huh. and civil rights activist. Uh -huh. And she was one of the first African musicians to receive worldwide recognition and bring African music to a Western audience. Tell me about that. Wow. She, she, she actually was a landmark. She's a very, very beautiful um, musician. Okay. She immigrated to the US in 1960 after gaining popularity as a singer and an actress for her role in the anti apartheid film, Come Back Africa. Wow. She received a Grammy for her collaboration album with Harry Belafonte. Mm -hmm. A Grammy is an award for the arts, like music yeah. or drama. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So she did the music. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And the first one is Rosa Parks. Uh -huh. And mm -hmm. the second one is Ruby Bridges. So who is Rosa Parks, Jen? Rosa Parks is um an early activist and NAACP. So she's a civil rights advocate and a mother of the freedom movement. Can you tell me why she's a mother of the freedom movement? Um, tell me one popular story about Rosa Parks. Um, so all the all the black people were called colored people, and all the white people were called like uh -huh. their names, and then so even in the buses they had to sit in separate places. Uh -huh. And when um when the white seats were full, another white person came in. Mm -hmm. The black the, a black person had to give up their seat mm -hmm. to the white person. Mm -hmm. So what did she do? She 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 stays in her seat when the, another white person came in. Wow! So she refused but, to and, stand up for a white person to and, take a seat on the, the bus. And the driver asked her to move, but she said. She wouldn't, and then the police came and took her away. Now that we finish watching those interesting videos, I really like that hero one. Yeah, another. Ah, so many. What, what lessons, lessons have you learned this, this year, year from the chats? What lessons have you learned this year from the chats? Hmm. I've learned virtue. Well, that's a good question. We have actually learned quite a few lessons. Hmm. We have learned a lot about friendship and the type of friends that we should keep if you don't remember anything about leaves branches or trunks go back and watch it what else have we learned um we've learned yeah heroes and we've learned like you said the role models who would they've saved our lives saved our lives yeah saved our lives some of them did actually save our lives though if, if um that lady, I don't remember her name, but she hadn't gotten the people out of slavery, they would be there forever. Harriet Tubman? Yeah. Hmm, that's a good one. Okay. Maybe not our lives directly, but save the lives of others. Yeah. Because she was quite a long time ago. So, what else? Hmm. Oh, 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 do you remember the House Rules series? Yeah. Oh, yeah, we learned a lot. We learned about, thank you, sorry, please take a spoon. Um, walk away. Mm -hmm. Respect, responsibility, love, so forgiveness, hard seated. There were a lot. And you can even get your own house rules poster on readgroupy.com. Yeah. So don't hesitate by today. Okay, what's next? <laughs> <laughs> okay. We also learned about other cultures, like masquerades. Oh, yeah, that was interesting. I remember learning about the Northern African masquerades, which were really masquerade. But if you don't get that, you should just watch the video. What else? Mm. Remember when we actually chose the topics and we chose respect? And also remember the one about names? When we invited someone from Ghana to talk with us? Remember what Mummy J's name was? That was really fun. Okay, I think we can move on to the next part. What was the most helpful? I think the most helpful for me was Hero. I think the most helpful one for me is the one where we interviewed lots of different ladies and they all told us some really, really interesting views on their own house rules. Remember what Baroness said? She said that every action has a consequence. Like if I threw this laptop over the room, it would break. That would be a consequence. Get it? 
Yeah. Okay. What was your most important one? Um, my most important one was um the house rules because he can they can stop all your bad habits and make them into good habits, like you molding some clay or plasticine or clay or something. Okay, I see what you mean. Oh, okay. Let's say it again. Okay. <laughs> no, say it loud. Probably. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's number one. I mean, Probably. Stop, stop. What else can be funny? Probably. <laughs> 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 you know, I was listening to a gentleman that defined friendships by using an analogy of a tree. He said, on a tree, there are lots of leaves. Yeah. So those leaves are acquaintances. Oh. So they, they, they just come and they come for a season. You know, do you understand that they, they are evergreen trees and they are, what's the other kind? The, 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 so but yeah so, so those those leaves come at a season and then they dry up so that's how some friends are no but now acquaintances. acquaintances and some friends you know that's why i said you have to be cautious and you're careful and you're conscious about it so by doing that you know and you have defined that person this person is here for a season I'm conscious. I'm conscious of that person. So the person is going to go when all things are when all things are no good. The person will go when I'm facing trouble. The person will go. Now there are also friends that are branches. You know what branches are? They are there for a season, and after a while, they die because somehow all the branches of a tree don't stay on the tree forever. It's empty. Some do. So those are the kind of friends, friends that stick with you for a couple of years, maybe through primary school or through secondary school. They are there for a season. But then, like, is it that they... It's not that they are serving... bad. It's not that they are bad. They are just there for a season. They are serving They are serving a purpose for a season. Let me give you an example. If somebody loses... Okay, let me say, if somebody is a good sportsman in school, you would always tend to have friends that are in sportsmanship because you have the same like. You have the same likeness. You shared something common at that season. But once you leave that level and you have now gone to university and you are doing biochemistry, you will not be you not be you'll not be always around those that are doing sportsmanship again. You tend to be um acquiring friends that are scientists friends that are biochemists at that level so those are branches they come at a certain time of your life most of the time they are good i'm not saying they are not good but they are not they are not like eternal friends they are not friends forever they're now twigs. and yeah they are tweaks and they some will of drop them are and some and of them will drop yeah exactly bye 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 bye, bye, bye friends but let me tell you do you know that the leaves are more than the branches so the leaves are the short term and they go. The branches are the ones that will stick for a while. And when you face some critical situations in your life and they are not able to bear with you, they walk away. Now, how many roots do we have on the tree? Roots. You have most of the trees have one central root that goes down. The trunk. The, tr oh, yeah, the root. The root. The trunk and the root. Let's, let's assume those one is one thing. The trunk, mind the way you're looking. Relax your eyes. The trunk. <laughs> the trunk. <laughs> I can't even imagine looking at that face. I'm like, she's just go like, oh. So the trunk, <laughs> the trunk and the root. So those are the ones that will stick with you through all the seasons of your life. There are not many. So that is why by the time you've tested them with your carefulness, your consciousness and your consciousness. <laughs> By the time you've tested with the three C's, they remain in your life forever. That is why mommy still have some friends that she was friends with from childhood. And they are still friends up till now. 
and she can go to them anytime and say because she has built that relationship she has tested that relationship they have stood by her throughout the seasons of her life and the roots are few but tell you what if you have one root friend or two root friends is more than a thousand leaves or a million branches wait this subscribe button is right make sure you turn it gray bye